Hi, this is Jamie Scherer from Autodesk, and this is part two of Simplifying the Content Center. In this video, we're going to focus on editing the family table inside Autodesk Inventor, as well as editing family properties. If you tuned in for part one of Simplifying the Content Center, we went through the steps that are required to create a custom library inside of Inventor. With a custom Content Center library, we can now use the Content Center editor to start to edit content. Within the editor, we have a few options depending on how we want to edit the content. The first option is Copy To. Copy To enables editing of the family table and the family properties. This function copies the family data, but does not create a physical copy of the parent in a read-write library. This copy will update with the parent. Jumping over into our custom library, you can see I have a copy of that bolt inside of our hex head folder. I now have the ability to edit the family properties as well as the family table. Now that I have access to the family properties, I can change things like the family name or the family description. Also inside of the parameter mapping, you can see the parameters in yellow, head height, nominal diameter, nominal length, etc., have to be mapped correctly in order for this to be a content center component. So keep that in mind as you're editing the family table. You'll also see a thumbnail and a link. This link is going to show you what family or what family member this is linked to inside of the content center. Let's go ahead and look at the family table for this hex head bolt. Inside of the family table, I have the ability to customize and remove members that I don't want to use. I can suppress them in case I want to use them again later, or I can go ahead and completely delete them if we never want to see them again. Also inside the family table, I have the ability to customize and create more family members. In this case, what I'm going to do is add a row and then copy all the properties from a similar row. Once I do that, I can go ahead and just change the cells that need to be changed. In this case, the nominal length will change it to 14 so that we have our new 14 millimeter bolt. Now if I apply and OK that, I have successfully published this family table back into the content center. Now that we've taken a look at copy two, Let's take a look at our other options with Save Copy As. Save Copy As creates a copy and lets the user use both the parent and the child. Save Copy As gives us two options. We can Save Copy As with a link or without a link. Save Copy As with link creates a physical copy of the parent family in the user library, which will update with the parent. This is useful for creating part families with identical parameters, but different materials. Save Copy As without a link creates an independent family. You can edit all of the data, including the parameter mapping in the template. You'll see here we have the ability to change the expression. This allows us to see what the nomenclature and the naming will be for our content center bolt. We can pull from the parameters, the nominal head dimension, the nominal length, and have those included as the name for the bolt. Now that we've saved our copy, let's go ahead and edit the family table. Inside of the family table, we can change all of the properties for our new custom bolt. The first thing that I want to change is the file name for this bolt. As I mentioned earlier, we can pull from parameters to make the file naming convention exactly what we expect it to be. By selecting the entire column and going to column properties, I want to go ahead and change the expression for this bolt. You can see I want to include my Acme custom bolt name followed by an M representing the screw thread. And now I can pull from the parameter names, maybe nominal diameter by nominal length, so that my expression will name the files exactly how we want them to be named. I can also map from an inventor property if that's what we were looking for. Once I okay this, you'll see inside of my table, my new file name will automatically update. I have Acme custom bolt, M by nominal diameter by nominal length. Next, we want to change the part numbering scheme to match our company standard for this bolt. What I'm going to do is edit this family table within Microsoft Excel. Excel can help automate this process of changing the numbers for our part number. In this case, our part numbering scheme is for a 300 series bolt, and then I want to have, I want to have Excel go ahead and calculate a linear numbering scheme for me. This family table has over 90 members in it, and I wouldn't want to have to manually enter in each part number. This makes sure that we're keeping up with our comp company numbering standards, but we're also not taking up too much time to edit the content center. 
Now that I finished updating our part numbers, I'm going to save this inside of Excel and head back over into Inventor to finish editing the rest of the family table. Back in Inventor, our Excel changes have been consumed by the family table. We can see by the highlighted fields that our part number and file name conventions have been updated. I'm now going to apply this and have it updated inside the Content Center library. The last edits that we need to do inside of our custom library are going to be to change a bolt family to a different material. Let's say that within our company we stock two bolts, one, one in steel and one in aluminum. We need to be able to change that so that our engineers can access both. What I'm going to do is do another save copy as. In this case, we're going to link it to the parent. Keeping that link ensures that the copy in our user library will update with the parent. This is useful because in this case, we have two bolts with identical parameters. We just want to be able to change the materials. On the copy in my user library, we're going to edit the family table. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and just simply change the material types. Once I change my material to aluminum 6160, I can save my edits back into the content center. That about wraps it up for simplifying the Content Center Part 2. Be sure to tune in for Part 3 where we take a look at authoring content to the Content Center. Thanks again for joining. Follow me at Jamie underscore Scherer on Twitter. Hope to see you at Part 3. Thanks.